I was walking down the corridor of the hospital with one of the other chaplains. I was a brand new chaplain at the hospital. And the person I was walking with was about 20 years older than me and, and very well experienced. He turned out to be a really great mentor for me. As we were walking down the hall, we met a woman and he introduced me as, you know, someone new on staff. And, and she was somebody who'd worked at the hospital for a long while. And then he asked this woman, well, how have you been doing? And the woman immediately broke down crying. I mean, she was sobbing almost uncontrollably there in the corridor with people coming and going around us. And she explained that she's not sure how she's gonna continue with life since her son has died, that she doesn't know how to live without him. We tried to offer her assurance and give her some comfort and, and, and the things that were appropriate to do in that circumstance. But later in the day, when he and I were both alone behind closed doors, he asked, what's your impression of the woman we met in the hallway. And I said, you know, I, I don't understand. I, I, she's clearly in a lot of pain, but she's here at work. And I'm not sure how she can work after just having lost her son. Uh, and, you know, aren't, aren't there better benefits or support for someone in that circumstance? And he paused and said, you know, what you weren't aware of is that her son died about a dozen years ago. She's been like that ever since. That happened about 40 years ago. It, it was clearly something to stick with me. 40 years ago, that was described as pathological grief or unresolved grief. At that point in time, theorists believed that where the bereavement process went through a series of stages and phases that ended in about a year, and after that, somebody was free from grief. We know that's not true, and that's what I want to talk about today. So as I talk about this, be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you're notified of future videos. We've learned a lot about bereavement in the last 40 years, and I've talked about that in a couple other videos, which are linked to this one. But there's something new that happened in the recent months. In March of this year, the American Psychiatric Association issued a new definition for something called prolonged grief disorder. Prolonged grief disorders is a series of, of symptoms, of, of things that people exhibit that show that they're really stuck in the grief process, the bereavement process. Now, technically, bereavement is the process we go through as we're looking to resolve a loss. We generally think of this as the loss of a loved one, but it could be a loss of anything significant in our life. Grief is that sharp pain that we experience in relationship to the loss. And brief, grief is a common emotion in the bereavement process. Prolonged grief disorder is recognized by a pervasive yearning for the loved one. There's a preoccupation with the person. It's, it's as though the person in experiencing the grief can't accept the loss, the death of the loved one. There are very intense emotions. There's an inability to enjoy familiar things in life, things that they used to do, things that were activities that brought them joy, and an inability to, to maintain relationships because they're so focused on what was lost. Now, for most people, bereavement happens as a normal, natural process. It's a healthy process. There's nothing pathological about bereavement. Bereavement, depending on the kind of loss that's happened, the nature of the loss, the nature of the relationship you've had, bereavement can last six months, 12 months, 15 months, 18 months. There's no rule here. It lasts as long as it lasts. And eventually, bereavement sort of resolves itself 
as an individual is able to continue moving on with their life without the person who is now gone. So that they reor you reorganize your life and, and you move forward. This prolonged grief disorder, which is estimated to impact about 10% of people, is addressing those who get stuck those who are unable to come to a place where they can get on with their life. So that after six or 12 months, when somebody is experiencing emotions of grief that are just like they found out the person who died, that's a sign that something's just not working right and that they need some additional support. This definition is important simply because in the past, if someone was stuck in the bereavement process. They were probably going to be diagnosed with major depression disorder or with uh, adjustment disorder. And neither of those things are actually accurate and indicate what's really going on. Uh, with prolonged grief disorder, there's an understanding that with treatment, there's going to be some resolution. But here's the thing for all of us as we go through the bereavement process and deal with grief. Even when we're able to move on with our life and, and bereavement has sort of resolved itself, grief can come back at any time. Grief, the emotion. It can come back on holidays and Mother's Day and Father's Day, on the anniversary of someone's death. It can come back when you hear a familiar song that reminds you of the person or where you're, when you're in a place where you used to go with that person. There are all kinds of things that remind us of the people who have been in our lives who have died. And when that grief, that emotion comes back, it can come back for a moment, it can come back for a day. And that's normal, that's natural, that's healthy. It's what's referred to as the continuing bonds of grief. It's the continuing bond we have with our loved one. We never want to forget the people that were important in our life that we lost. They're still part of us. We carry them in our memories and they've made us the people we are. And these moments of grief that we experience, while they're uncomfortable, they're a reminder of how important the person was. And they're part of what happens. And it's okay when it happens. The reason I'm talking about this today is so many people misunderstand bereavement and grief that I think it's important to really keep talking about it as well as, as help us talk with each other about it because it's so easy to think that there's something wrong because I'm feeling this pain. Even though this significant person in my life died 20 years ago, I still feel grief sometimes. That's normal. That's okay. Give yourself permission to experience it. Thanks for your time today. Be sure to subscribe to this video, like it, share it with others because you know everyone experiences grief and bereavement. And leave me some comments about your own process and things you've learned by going through the bereavement process. Have a really great day.